Okay, to-do list. Give the eagle precision damage. Give the boar precision damage. Give the tiger precision damage. And last but not least, give the grizzly bear precision damage. Got it. Today, we're going to be talking about the ranger in Pathfinder 2nd Edition on this episode of The Local Disaster Tour Guide. Travelers and tourists, my name is Mark and I am the local disaster tour guide. That's right, I am a storyteller who is saying, no, you cannot have a dragon zord just because you're playing a powerful ranger. Welcome to a journey through the fantastic world of TTRPGs like Pathfinder and Starfinder. Today we are back with another episode of my classic introduction series where we take a look at different classes inside of RPGs and ask what do they have to offer for players at our gaming tables. We have been working through some of the classes in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and in my videos I ask for recommendations about which class I should do next, and one of the requests I saw a few different times was for a classic introductions video on the Ranger. So today, we're going to take a look at that classic woodsman archetype, that deadly hunter and that master of the wild, what does the Ranger offer us in Pathfinder 2nd Edition? Now, in the Classic Introduction series, we always examine the classes through the lens of five specific questions. What is the Ranger? What are the strengths of the Ranger? What are the weaknesses of the Ranger? What build options does the Ranger offer? And last but not least, how can I get the most out of the Ranger in play? So, let's get started. So, up first, let's talk about this question, what is the Ranger? For this section, I like to break our discussion down into three component parts. Number one, what is the class role of the Ranger in Pathfinder 2e? Number two, how complex is the Ranger? And finally, what are the key terms that you need to be aware of if you decide to play a Ranger? So to dive into that first question, what is the role of the Ranger? Well, in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, the Ranger falls under the heading of Martial Classes, which is a class that is focused on fighting things, basically. Whether it is getting up and personal with the monster, or whether it is expertly taking the monster down with ranged shots from a distance, the Ranger is all about combat prowess. But, I think it's important with every class to understand how they distinguish themselves from similar classes, so when I talk about the Ranger, I think the better way to describe the class role of the Ranger is it is the single target takedown martial class. Or, I guess if you want to use less words, it's the Hunter class. The Ranger is the class that is all about picking a target, focusing on that target, and taking that target down as fast and as hard as possible. Every martial class comes with different specialties, and for the Ranger, it is their ability to focus on specific targets and deal as much damage as possible or find other skilled ways to take that target down that really differentiates the playstyle of the Ranger in Pathfinder 2e. The next question I want to talk about is complexity. How complex is the Ranger? Well, Overall, I would like to give the Ranger a complexity score of 6 out of 10. I think they are a little bit above average in terms of complexity in play. They're not as crazy to figure out as some builds of the fighter might be, but there's still going to be some nuance to the Ranger when you're playing one, and you will need to pay attention to some details if you want to operate at maximum efficiency. Now, let me say this about the subject of complexity. Regardless of where a class falls on the complexity scale, 
no matter how low or high it may be. Let me say this, complexity should never be an obstacle for someone who is really interested in playing a particular archetype or a particular class. Over years and years of storytelling, I can tell you that interest and excitement outweigh complexity at any gaming table. If you are interested in the character, you should definitely give it a shot, but thankfully the Ranger is only slightly above average, so I don't think it should be too difficult, even for relatively new players. Now one of the things I like about Pathfinder 2nd Edition when it comes to handling the complexity of different character classes is Paizo actually goes out of their way in their rulebooks to highlight the key terms and the key ideas that you are going to want to pay attention to when you are playing that class. They actually give each class a sidebar that says these are the terms that you need to know and that you need to be familiar with if you are playing this class. The Ranger comes in a little less complex than the Fighter with three key terms that we've actually seen already in the Fighter video. Flourish, Open, and Press. As a quick review of what those terms mean, Flourish are actions that require a little more concentration than normal actions, and you can think of the term Flourish as meaning once per round. Regardless of which combination of actions you choose to do, you will only be able to pull off a Flourish action once in a given round. Open is actually pretty simple to understand. You can basically think of Open as opening attack. If you want to use an action with the Open trait, it needs to be the first offensive action that you are taking in a given round. You can still move before you use an action with the open trait, but that open trait does mean it needs to be the first offensive action that you're taking. The press trait, on the other hand, is almost the reverse of the open trait. You can think of press as meaning follow-up attack. You cannot use a press action unless you've already made another attack. You have to have a multiple attack penalty going in order to use an action with the press trait. Now, we have seen these three traits already in our discussion of the fighter class, but I will say that Paizo left an important trait off of the sidebar, which is prey or I guess more specifically the hunt prey action that we will be talking about later in this video. As a ranger, you specialize in picking out a specific target and zeroing in on them. Your prey is the focus of your anger, your hostility, your lethal intent, and so many things in the ranger class revolve around whatever creature you are currently targeting. When you are attacking your prey, you're likely to be more accurate, possibly deal more damage. You may have better skills or better defenses. One of the key things to playing the ranger is understanding what applies when you are going after your prey and what benefits you lose if you are targeting a creature that is not currently your prey. One last thing to talk about with the Hunt Prey action is Hunt Prey has the Concentrate trait, which means that you cannot use Hunt Prey in situations where you are not allowed to use actions with the Concentrate trait. An example of this would be a Ranger who is under the effects of Rage for one reason or another. So, as I said, Paizo gives us the traits Flourish, Open, and Press, that they say Ranger players need to know and understand, but I would say the more important terminology for the Ranger is actually that designation of Prey and knowing what you get when you are attacking your Prey and what you lose when you attack a different creature. So now let's move on to the second big topic of this video, which is what are the strengths of the Ranger? For this video, I would like to focus in on three particular strengths of the Ranger, which are focus, perception, and skills. And that first item is definitely the biggest strength of the Ranger. The number one best thing about playing a Ranger is the incredible 
focus that the ranger has. Their core ability is called Hunt Prey, and as we've previously noted, Hunt Prey is an action where you target a particular creature and you focus yourself on that creature with just laser-like intensity. You have found your target and you are going to take your target down. There are so many things in the Ranger class that play off of this simple action, Hunt Prey. Take a single action, target that foe, and just start piling up the bonuses of what you can do to that particular individual or creature. By the end of the game, a Ranger can be better than Legendary in different categories when they are targeting their prey. This level of focus really allows a ranger to push what they are capable of when they are focused in on that target. Listing all of the examples would take way too long for the course of this video, but just know as you get more ranger class features, as you get more ranger feats, the list of benefits that you will have relative to your prey gets pretty crazy. And a good example of this is the second strength that I want to talk about for the Ranger, which is Perception. Ranger is one of the best classes in the game if you want to, well, see things. If you want to locate your target, the Hunter class is the class to do that, go figure. Rangers begin the game at expert level proficiency with Perception, and by the end of the game, they raise that proficiency up to Legendary. Oh, but if you're dealing with your prey, if you're dealing with a creature that you have targeted, or a creature that you are tracking, their perception actually gets a plus two bonus, which means that by the end of the game, the Ranger is better than Legendary when it comes to finding their prey. If a creature is trying to hide from you, the odds are not in their favor. There are other classes that get legendary proficiency and perception, such as the Rogue, but Rangers truly are among the best in the game when it comes to finding a particular target. And then we come to the final strength of the Ranger class, which is something of a surprise, but is logical when you think about it. Rangers are a very skilled class. Rangers begin the game proficient with survival, nature, and four other skills of their choice, plus their intelligence modifier, plus their background skills, plus any skills that they might have picked up from their ancestry. Even a relatively low intelligence ranger is probably going to be proficient in at least one-third of the skills inside of Pathfinder, and if a ranger invests in intelligence or invests in feats that improve their skills, they can easily become proficient in half or better of the skills inside the game. We think of rangers as survivalists, and they definitely have those skills, but the number of skill proficiencies available to the ranger really allow you to build a character with a diverse skill set that can address a lot of different situations. So if you're interested in playing a combat-oriented character, who also has a lot of unique skills outside of combat, Ranger can be a top tier choice. Rangers may not be able to compete with the Rogue or the Investigator, but their skills easily outshine most of the other classes in the game. But now that we've talked about the Ranger's strengths, let's move on to the third broad topic of this video, which is what are the weaknesses of the Ranger in Pathfinder 2e? Well, the biggest weakness of the Ranger is their focus. I know this may come as a little bit of a surprise, because in the previous section I already noted that one of the strengths of the Ranger is their incredible focus. They can pick a target, lock onto that target, and gain all kinds of absurd bonuses against that target. But the hunt-prey mechanic and the focus that the ranger has is sort of a double-edged sword because if you're a ranger who's not dealing with that target, suddenly you're in a bad spot. As a ranger, if you're focused on this guy over here and another creature jumps you from the side and now you have to deal with this creature, 
suddenly all of those wonderful bonuses from being so focused over here vanish. And your overall impact can drop very, very quickly if your focus is off for one reason or another. It's not too hard to imagine a gameplay scenario where you as a ranger pick out what you think is going to be the most dangerous target or the main target in a particular group of enemies, but then halfway through the fight, the boss of those particular enemies suddenly comes out of the woodwork and now you have a much more dangerous creature that you need to deal with, but your focus is over here, not on what is truly the most dangerous thing on the table. Now yes, you can switch the target of your hunt prey, but you have to use an action to do that. And losing actions in this game, especially for martial characters, can be a pretty serious hit. And in a nightmare scenario, you could easily find yourself being forced to switch from target to target to target before you actually manage to take targets down. And in those scenarios, your damage output and your impact on the battle could drop very, very quickly. And even more painfully, there are some ranger abilities that you can't even use unless it's against the target of your hunt prey. Rangers do not get attack of opportunity. Rangers can take a fourth level feat called Disrupt Prey, and that feat reads almost identically to the fighter's attack of opportunity. There are some small differences, but one of the main differences between them is Disrupt Prey only works against the target of your hunt prey. While it's not a true one-for-one -one comparison to the fighter ability, let me just say it's a pretty good example of how rangers lose effectiveness when they're trying to deal with something that's not the main target of their ire in a given moment. So when you play a ranger, just be aware that focus is an incredible strength, but it is also an incredible drawback if your focus is not in the right place. There are two more weaknesses of the ranger that I want to talk about, but I kind of want to talk about them together because they're two sides of the same coin. Rangers, historically, have been a class that have a bad habit of getting spread too thin. They get stretched out across too many different party roles and end up not being quite good enough in any singular area to shine the way you might want the class to shine. A classic example of this is known as multiple attribute dependency, where a class needs multiple attributes to be really, really high in order for them to be truly effective. Because the ranger can do so much, because the ranger has so many different skill options, and we're going to get into the build options here in a moment, there's a lot to like there as well. Because the ranger can do so many different things, it is very possible when you are playing and building a ranger to try to go too many directions and end up not really going anywhere effectively. So be aware when you are playing a ranger that you want to be intentional. You can't do everything that's in the ranger's wheelhouse, so you want to pick the particular elements of the ranger that appeal to you and make sure you get the right amount of focus so that you're operating at the level that you truly want to be at. So now we come to our fourth topic on the ranger, and that is, what are the build options that I have if I want to play a ranger? Now, for this section, I'm actually going to break this into two different parts because there's a couple of different considerations under build options for Ranger. The first is your Hunter's Edge, and the second are sort of the build options that are found inside the Ranger class feats. Hunter's Edge is your main subclass pick for the Ranger, and basically what Hunter's Edge is asking when you pick a target for your hunt prey, what is the specific core bonus that you want when it comes to that particular target? Your options are Flurry, Precision, and Outwit. Flurry is your accuracy option. What this option is going to do is it is going to lower your multiple attack penalty when you are attacking your target. So if you swing multiple times, on the target of your hunt prey, you will have a much lower penalty for those multiple strikes. By the way, 
Flurry pairs ridiculously well with agile weapons. You can almost make that multiple attack penalty vanish if you are playing a flurry ranger and going after your prey. Precision is basically your bonus damage option. This option is more for the ranger who is about making that one perfect lethal kill shot. Yes, further down the road you can get some bonus damage over multiple attacks, but for the most part, precision is focused on making one solid and lethal attack against your target. The third option is outwit, and rather than being focused on offense, this is the ranger subclass option that focuses on skills and defense. You will get better armor class, you will get better skill bonuses if you're trying to recall knowledge about your target or use specific skills against your target. Outwit is the defensive-minded option when a ranger wants to be really good at avoiding the worst that their target might be able to do in return. Now between these three different options, Flurry is probably the most popular online. It gets a lot of love in a lot of different corners. Though, I will say personally, I just absolutely love Precision because it opens up my other actions during the turn. I can have one hit that's doing a lot of damage and then I can do other actions to move around the battlefield or accomplish other special things during the fight. So Precision is really appealing to me because of that. The Outwit option is probably the least popular and I wonder if that's because at the end of the day Defense is often seen as the less interesting option. I will say this though, don't overlook the skill bonuses you can get if you play an Outwit Ranger. Outwit skills can eventually get a plus four bonus against the target of their hunt prey. And I just want you to imagine for a moment a Ranger who is already legendary in a given skill and they have targeted their hunt prey and they have outwit, so they are adding plus four on top of what their incredible skill bonus already is, their target has no chance. That is an incredibly, incredibly powerful swing. So let me just say, outwit may be easy to overlook because it's the defensive option, but those skill bonuses are definitely appealing in the right circumstances. But now, let's talk about the second half of Ranger build options, which come in the form of the Ranger class feats. Much like the Fighter, there are several, I'm not sure exactly what to call them, in other editions you might have called them feat trees or build paths. There are some clear design options that can be seen inside of the Ranger class feats. And let me just say, there is a pretty incredible amount of diversity here. I am about to fly through 10 different build paths for the Ranger, and I'm not even sure if I'm breaking the build paths down right because there's even some nuance inside of these paths. One thing that I do want to note here is you can take any of these class feats with any of the Hunter's edges that we've already talked about. Now, some edges probably are going to match with certain build paths a little better than others, for example, if you're going to go the crossbow ace route, the precision hunter's edge is probably going to be closer to what you want to pick than flurry would be. But, truthfully, any of these ranger class feet build paths has the potential to be stacked with any of the actual hunter's edges. Now up here, I'm going to list the different build paths that I'm talking about. And if the title of the build path is different from the class feed, I'll put the class feed beside it. But really quick, the list of the build paths that I can find includes the animal companion build path, the two weapon fighting build path, the crossbow ace build path, the rapid shot build path, the strategist build path, from the advanced player's guide, the caster ranger, starting at second level, the Dr. Doolittle build path, also starting at second level, the Survivalist build path, starting at fourth level, the Trap Maker build path, and then finally, late in the game, at twelfth level, the Multi Target build path. The Animal Companion build path is exactly what it sounds like. 
you get a pet. And there are so many options here, I'm not even going to try to dig into them because the video would be way too long. But if you are interested in an animal companion video done separate, let me know and I'll try to get that out to you. But basically, you get an animal companion and it joins you on adventures. The two weapon fighting build path is all about using a pair of weapons to take down your opponent as rapidly as possible. This usually pairs really well with the flurry hunter's edge. The crossbow ace build path is all about getting the most out of your crossbows and can result in a build where you have really powerful single shots against particular targets. On the opposite spectrum of ranged combat you have what I call the rapid shot build path which can be exemplified by the hunter shot feat where you can fire multiple arrows in a row at your prey. A surprisingly good build path is the Strategist path, which comes from the Monster Hunter feed line, where you can use Recall Knowledge to pass out team buffs against a particular target. Can you say boss fights? Yeah, it's amazing. As noted, the Advanced Player's Guide added caster rangers to the game by giving rangers access to a wide array of focus spells. And another build option for rangers is what I call the Dr. Doolittle build, where you take the Wild Empathy feat and serve as your party's face when dealing with creatures of the wild. If you really want to play up the survivalist aspect of the ranger, feats like Terrain Expertise can make you particularly skilled in natural settings or wild encounters. And in one of the build paths that I haven't gotten to try, but, I would <clears throat> but I'm really excited to give a shot, Starting at 4th level, rangers can use Snare Specialist to start down what I call the Trap Maker Path, where you get really, really good at dropping traps in the middle of the battlefield and using those to do some pretty crazy damage to any unfortunate creature that steps inside of them. Now, this next build path is definitely a late game build path, but I still think it's worth mentioning, and that is what I call the Multi-Target Build Path and it starts with the Double Prey feat at 12th level for Ranger. What Double Prey does is it allows you to target two different creatures as prey and gain all of your benefits against both of those creatures and then the multi-target build path kind of builds from there. This build path is notable because it offsets what I noted as one of the major weaknesses of the Ranger class which is the if you're focused on the wrong target. This allows you to have multiple targets and makes it easier to switch targets without losing benefits inside of the game. So I definitely consider that to be a build option for Rangers that you want to think about as well. But that was just a quick overview of the different build options that the Ranger has. Truly, Paizo did a wonderful job of giving the Ranger a very purposeful design inside of the game and then a variety of options to go with that design. Ranger is really well done and you can spend a lot of time exploring the different options that the Ranger has. But as I said earlier, the main thing you want to remember about the Ranger build options is that your Hunter's Edge subclass Flurry, Precision, or Outwit can potentially combine with any of these other class feat build options that I've talked about. Picking one does not necessarily automatically lock you in to another. And then to kind of stack on top of that, when you're talking about the Ranger class feat build paths, please remember that it is very possible as a Ranger that you might build two or three of these into your character over the course of your campaign. But now let's come to our last topic for the video, which is how can I get the most out of the Ranger class? And for the Ranger class, I want to give you three things to keep in mind when you are building or playing a Ranger. Planning, patience, and teamwork. Yeah, teamwork's going to be on this list. Now the first one that I'm going to talk about, planning, is definitely something that you would think about when playing a hunter, but this is also kind of a meta conversation when you are actually building your ranger. As I said earlier, ranger is one of those classes that can get spread way too thin if they try to do too many things. 
This can be particularly challenging if you're playing an Outwit Ranger who is also doing Monster Hunter and Wild Empathy and some of the other survivalist options that the class has to give you. You could very quickly find yourself overwhelmed trying to do all of these different things at once and eating up too many of your skill selections. Ranger is definitely one of those classes where you want to plan ahead when it comes to your character build. Now, let me just say this is one of those areas where this piece of advice I have to be careful because you can take this piece of advice too far. What I am not saying is plan your character build for all 20 levels before you sit down for your very first session of Pathfinder 2e. That's not what I'm saying. The character that you build in your head before the first dice is even rolled is not going to fit the actual campaign that you play, no matter how well you think you have designed the character. You always want to leave some room to adapt and change your character concept and your character build as you progress through a campaign. But because Ranger can go so many different directions, you do want to have in mind the directions that are important to you. Is the crossbow ace an important part of your build? Well, think about the things that are going to be important to that build and make sure that those particular items make their way into your build when they need to. Do you really want to play up the survivalist aspect of the ranger? Again, look at the class feats, look at the skill selections that are going to go well with that particular concept so that you know what you need to set aside in your character build to make sure that it happens. Rangers want to make sure that they are building intelligently and that they are hitting the components of their build that are truly important to them. And as an extension of that planning concept, let me just go ahead and throw in Paizo has built retraining rules into the core rulebook of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So if you are playing a ranger and you find yourself in a situation where you've tried to go two different directions and it's not working the way you want it to work, it is completely okay to talk to your DM about retraining and maybe pulling back in one area so that you can get to the level that you want to get in the area that is truly important to you. So planning is a little bit of a meta conversation, but what about actually in play? Well, the next two things I want to talk about are going to be more important in play, and one of them is patience. Remember, you are playing a ranger. You are playing a master of the wild. You are playing a skilled and lethal hunter. That playstyle does not blend well with rushing in headlong at the first opportunity. Hunters are deliberate people, and you are too. If you want to be effective as a ranger, make sure that you are rolling initiative when you are ready to roll initiative. Set the battlefield to your advantage. Especially if you're playing like the Trapmaker build that I talked about, if you're using those incredible snares, do your best to get those snares on the battlefield before the monsters even know you're there. Take your time, scout, check the area, double check the area. Engage the foe on your terms. Patience is the marker of a skilled ranger and a lethal hunter. And then we have the last concept that is important to playing a ranger well, which is teamwork. And I'll go ahead and say this one is a little bit odd when you think about it at first, because ranger is like the archetype of the lone wolf. When we think about dark edgelords and that kind of character that has a bad reputation at gaming tables, we usually portray that character as a ranger. That is the picture that we use for rangers quite often, but the thing about the ranger is the ranger in Pathfinder 2e is one of the strongest teamwork classes in the game. Rangers are really good at focusing on a particular target, but they're also really good at helping their allies focus on that target as well. When you see online conversations about how to be effective in RPGs in general, one of the things you'll frequently see discussed is the concept of focus fire, having your party work together to take down one creature at a time and then as a party moving to the next creature taking it down and on and on and on. 
Focus fire is a very effective tactic inside of RPGs, and it's a very effective tactic here as well. You can kill creatures faster, and as a result, they don't get to attack you as much. And rangers are really good at focused fire. So as a ranger, you may want to fight against that lone wolf stereotype just a little bit, and actually work with your pack to take your target down. But that's all I've got for today. Now it's time to turn the conversation over to you. What are your thoughts on the Ranger class in Pathfinder 2e? Do you agree with my assessment? Are there strengths of the Ranger that I overlooked? Or weaknesses of the Ranger that need to be highlighted? Are there build paths or options for the Ranger that stand out that just didn't make it into the list that I gave you? And what tips, tricks, and tactics would you recommend for someone who is interested in playing a Ranger in Pathfinder 2e? Leave your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for being a part of the conversation, and have a wonderful day.